<clears throat> the book of Nahum. Find it. Say amen. Amen. Nahum, the third chapter. And I said the first verse. We're actually going to begin reading in the fourth, but I had the first verse here because I want you to know that he's talking to Nineveh and he addresses them in this way. He says, Woe to the bloody city. And he's talking to the city of Nineveh. I told you last week whenever we opened up our sermon, I gave you a little preview of what we'd be dealing with this week. And I chose this portion of Scripture, or should I say the Holy Spirit chose this portion of Scripture, All right. to show us this damning indictment Come on. that God has against witchcraft and the occult. Mm -hmm. I want you to realize something today, that nowhere in the Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, you can search it out yourself, Every page, every verse, every passage, you will find no favorable comments at all when it comes to witchcraft and the occult. Amen? Exactly. None whatsoever. Come on. Now there are things that people might consider debatable, meaning Brother Slee sees it one way, I see it another. Right. There are things that we might read, and Brother Dave, we might think, well, I'm not sure. I don't I understand that. Right. But by the time that I'm through today, I will give you enough Scripture that you will know beyond the shadow of a doubt Come on. God's opinion on witchcraft and the occult. Right. Amen? True. And I chose this passage of Scripture because Nahum 3 and 4, he says this, Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. Now listen to the strong language that he uses here. He says, The mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. I want you to notice what an indictment God has here in comparing. Now, don't get me wrong. No doubt there were sorceries and different things like that that went on in Nineveh. But he's comparing their abomination and their sin that, it came, that, that was before him and the, the grotesque abominations that went on there. He likens it to witchcraft. Amen. Now certainly there was witchcraft that took place there. Absolutely. But I want you to see the strong language that God uses here. Verse 5, He says, Behold, I am against thee. Yeah. I want you to know this morning yeah. that God is against witchcraft Come on. and the occult. Come Amen? On, I want you to know this morning that there's no gray area. Come on. I want you to know this morning that if you want to know what God thinks about witchcraft, it is an abomination in His sight. Always has been. Always will be. Amen? There's no wavering in God's opinion whenever it comes to witchcraft and the occult, to witches or to sorcery or to wizards Come on. or any of the other things. Now, if you look at Hollywood, Preach. Hollywood portrays it different. Preach. But if you follow Hollywood, you'll wind up in hell. Amen? Exactly. There's no such thing as white magic. Come on. There's no such thing as good witches. Right. You won't find that in the Word of God. Come on. Preach. God's Word is plain. Yes. Witchcraft is an abominable Why? Because it glorifies and uplifts the kingdom of darkness. Right. Because it glorifies and uplifts Satan, Satan. instead of God. Amen. Right. And we see here because of his rough language to the city of Nineveh, Preach. he's letting us know his opinion on witchcraft. Yeah, Amen. Exactly. And he says it has destroyed your families through its whoredoms. Amen. Yeah. He calls it a mistress. Amen. Many times in the Word of God, God will talk about sin as it being adultery toward Him. Amen? Oh, and here we find that the word mistress there can mean a couple of different things. One, it can mean a woman of authority, but it can also mean an adulteress. Yes. And He likens witchcraft to Absolutely. this. Because when you go chasing after the things of the occult and witchcraft, mm -hmm. you have to forsake God and turn to those things because you can't have both. Amen? Amen? Right. So I really wanted us to read there in the book of Nahum because of God's strong language yeah. when it comes to witchcraft. Amen? Absolutely. First Timothy 4 and 1 says, the Spirit, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits Amen. and doctrines of devils. Amen? Oh, There's a reason today that Satan would have you to believe or to have, you, to have, the, uh, to have the mindset that he is no more than a cartoon character. 
Yeah. That he has something on a greeting card. Right. That he's a little guy that's got a pitchfork and pointed ears. Oh, There's on. a reason today that he wants you to think of him in cartoonish ways. Amen? Come on. Because he don't want you to know that he is really the enemy of your soul. Exactly. He doesn't want you to know that he is really the, 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 the enemy who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Oh. He doesn't want you to know that he's your adversary. Right. He doesn't want you to know that his desire, his heart's desire for Come you on, is to kill you and see you spend eternity in hell. Amen? Exactly. So there's a reason that he wants you to think that it's just fun and games. Amen? Amen? Amen. There's a reason today that he wants you to believe that he's no more than a cartoon Amen. character. Because if you believe that, well, he's already got you halfway there. Because you don't realize who your enemy is right. and the weapons that he uses. Amen? Amen. In Galatians, the third chapter and the first verse, the Apostle Paul writing to the church of Galatia, he says, O oh, foolish Galatians, and listen to the language that the Lord uses here. O oh, foolish Galatians, who, ha who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Come on. Now it is one thing for the preacher to have to stand and to preach to the world yes. that witchcraft and the occult is not of God and it's not approved of God. Amen. And that we should have no fellowship with that. Come on, preach. It's one thing for a preacher, Brother Schleese, to have to stand before the world and preach those things. It's a complete another thing. Another thing for a preacher to have to stand before the church world as we know it today Come on, and try and convince them yeah. that witchcraft is wrong. Exactly. How much spiritual discernment on, do you need today to realize the things of the occult are wrong? Come on. That witchcraft is wrong. Bring Amen. It, it is a shame that as a preacher you have to stand before church people. Right. Amen. Absolutely. And try to convince them that having anything to do with the occult is wrong. Amen. To try to convince them that having anything to do with witchcraft is wrong. Amen. 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 When the Bible is clear. Come on. Amen. Come on. Christians should not have to be told right. that watching horror shows is wrong. Amen. Amen. Preach. Christians should not have to be told Come on, tell it. that watching television shows or playing video games that has witches and ghosts and wizards in them are wrong. Come on. Amen. We should be past that. Come on. Christians should not have to be told these things because God's Word is so clear exactly. on these things. Amen. Yeah. Christians should not have to be told that it's wrong Come to on. read your horoscope. Amen. And to trust in that. Amen. Right. Christians should not have to be told that it is wrong to celebrate death. Amen. That it is wrong to celebrate darkness. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, God has Come condemned on. those things. There is no gray area here. Come on, breathe. It's black and it's white. Amen? Absolutely. And God has proven over and over in His Word Amen. His opinion yes, sir. on these things. Amen. Amen? How sad it is to have to stand before a church world yeah. that has been so seduced by the mistress of witchcraft Come on. that they cannot tell the difference between the right and the wrong. Exactly. The light and the darkness. Come on. To have to tell them that we should have no fellowship with devils. Come on. Amen? To have to tell them that we should not celebrate death and not celebrate darkness and celebrate horror. Amen? Amen. Listen, you know what a shame it is and how it must grieve the heart of God for a preacher to have to stand before the church world as we know it today and say it's wrong to dress like a witch. Come on. It's wrong to dress like a vampire. Right. It's wrong to dress like a ghost. Right. Do you know how much it must grieve the Holy Spirit of God for the church as we know it today to be so ignorant that they don't know the difference between what is right and what is wrong, yes. what is good and what is evil? Come on. Preach. Amen. Preach it. If someone has to tell you that there's something wrong with you dressing your kids up like a witch, if someone has to tell you that it's wrong for you to dress your kids up like a devil, if someone has to tell you that it's wrong for you to dress up like a zombie or to dress your kids up like zombies, something's wrong with your soul today. Amen. Preach it. Something is wrong with your relationship with the Lord. Absolutely. Something is wrong with your knowledge of Scripture. Exactly. Because God is very clear when it comes to this. Amen. Amen. You're right. To have to try and convince a church world 
that it is detrimental to your soul to yes. feast on the things of the devil and to believe that it won't hurt you? Come on. Yeah. To believe that it is fun? Amen? Come on. We have no business messing with horoscopes. Right. We have no business messing with fortune tellers. Right. I won't even open a fortune cookie. Come on. Amen? Tell it. Go ahead and laugh at me. That's what the devil wants you to do anyway. Amen? Right. Anything that you look at and you can say it's fun, yeah. Show it to me in God's Word. Amen. Where He ever said it's okay to do it. Show it to me in His Word. Where He ever said it's okay as long as it's fun. And as long as you don't take it serious. No. He said stay away from it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Stay away from it. Absolutely. Yeah. I may lose some people this morning. Go ahead. Preach it. To have to try and convince people that this thing is detrimental to their soul and their spirit. Amen? Yes. That a Christian has no business reading books that deal with the occult. Right. That a Christian has no business watching movies or television shows that deal with the occult. Yes, Say, sir. preacher, you're going to make me feel bad. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's about yeah. time you felt bad yeah. over some of this stuff. Amen. Exactly. <laughs> There are some things, like I said in the Word of God, that are hard to understand. Why? There are some things that Brother David and me might not see eye to eye, eye, to eye on because we come away with a different thought of a Amen. passage of Scripture. True. There are some things that you may say, well, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh -huh. There is no way that you can think that if you read God's Word when it comes to, the, to witchcraft and the occult, Amen. There's no way that you can walk away thinking, well, I'm not sure how God feels about that. Come on. Oh, God's made it absolutely, completely Come clear on. in His Word. Bring it out. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Right. Under the law Come on. and under grace. Right. God's attitude toward witchcraft and the occult has always remained the same. Amen. It is of the devil. It is the works of darkness. Absolutely. It is fellowship with devils. There's no way around it. Amen. Come on, preach it. Always wrong. Always has been. Always will be. And by the time we're through this morning, I'm going to give you enough Scripture. Now, we could talk about, and you know that this is something that we deal with, especially in the month of October. And, and this it's it's really not just about Halloween. It's not just about this month. It's not. But the reason that it, I guess it is so significant this month than any others, besides the fact of, the, of its... Uh, of the popularity with the occult and with its the 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 way that the witchcraft and Wicca looks at it. Come on. I guess it's because it's the in your face evil Come and on. wicked that you see. Come I guess it's because when you go into the stores and you see the demon mask and the right. and the and, and the zombie mask and all those things. Sure. So I guess that that's what makes it more prevalent or at least more timely to preach on during this time than it does any other time of the year. Amen? Amen. Because of the in-your-face evil that you see right. in the aisles of our stores and hanging on people's houses. Amen? Exactly. So we deal with it pretty much every October. And we, I could stand up here this morning we could talk for two Sundays just on the history of the celebration of Halloween, what it means in the occult, but we're not going to do that. Today we want to talk about what God's Word says about witchcraft and the occult, which is the very reason why we have nothing to do with Halloween. Amen. Yeah, exactly. Which is the very reason we have nothing to do with with witchcraft and the occult and the things of darkness. Amen. Amen. The influence of the occult on America today is staggering. True. Amen. True. And not only in America, not only on America, but on the church. Yes, sir. And in the lives of Christians. True. Amen. And this is very easy to see whenever Christians go to horror shows. Right. When Christians are excited about the new season of The Walking Dead. Yeah. When you see Christians sharing their horoscopes on Facebook. Absolutely. It's very easy to see how that the seduction of the mistress of witchcraft right. not only has seduced the world into delving into darkness, but the church into delving into darkness as well. Alright. Preach it. Deuteronomy, the 7th chapter, the 26th verse. You can write that down or I'll wait for you to go over there either one. Deuteronomy 7 and 26. Dealing with abominations, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 7 26, Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, Come on. lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Amen. But thou shalt utterly detest it. Now listen, this is the attitude 
that God's people should have whenever it comes to the occult and witchcraft. Amen. He said, don't bring it into your house. He said that it is a cursed thing. Right. It says, thou shalt utterly detest it. Come on. Thou shalt utterly abhor it. Right. For it is a cursed thing. That is the attitude that the church should have whenever it comes to witchcraft and the occult. True. And listen to the strong language again. I'm every time that the Lord deals with witchcraft and the occult, He drives home the point of what He feels or what He, but what He, His attitude or what the truth is right. about the occult and witchcraft. Amen? Amen. And how that His people should have nothing to do with it. Amen? Amen. He said to refuse it. Come on. To refuse to bring it into your house. Right. To detest it. To abhor it. Why? Because it is a cursed thing. It is against God's Word. And when you open the door to these things, you open the door Amen. to the influence that these things bring with them. Absolutely. Amen. But instead of the church of today detesting it, uh -huh. abhorring it, yeah. not having anything to do with it, what do we see? Now you really want to know why this message is so timely this morning. Instead of seeing that, we see homes of non-believers and believers alike. Right. Decorated with witches, vampires, yeah. tombstones, True. ghosts, yeah. zombies, and more. And it goes much farther, beyond, much, much farther than that. We see books read by non-believers and believers alike that had to do with wizards and witches and the occult and oh. witchcraft. Amen. We see movies that glorify evil and darkness, not just in the homes of the unsaved, but in the homes of supposed to be born again Christians, True. believers, True. that if they really knew the Word of God, surely you wouldn't find them oh, there. Bring, Amen? Bring it out. Instead of abhorring it, instead of detesting it, we see it accepted right. and looked at by most people True. as harmless. Exactly. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to believe. Amen. That he is harmless. Amen. And say, Brother Billy, how do you know that these movies and these books can be found in Christian homes as well as those who aren't Christians? Because I've been to their yard sales. Oh, all right. Amen. Amen. I've been to their yard sales and I've looked at their movies that they're selling. That they about wore out. Yeah. Friday 13th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, how many there is? Amen? Yeah. Halloween, 1, 2, 3, 4, how many there is? Yeah. Amen? Chainsaw Massacre. Right. In Christian homes. Right. Amen. So I see the books that they sell at their yard sales. I see the movies that right. they sell at their yard sales. Amen? Yeah. Listen to me. You might say, well, I'm selling them because I got convicted of them. If, it's, if you got convicted of them, take them and burn them. Don't sell them for somebody else to get hooked on. Yeah, Amen? Exactly. I've been to the yard sales of church folks and I've browsed through, browsed through their movies before. Amen? Oh. Even seen one or two people squirm in their seat thinking, oh no, the preacher's looking at the movies. Yeah. Amen? If you're, if you're concerned about the preacher seeing your movies, uh, you really ought to be concerned about God seeing your movies. Yeah. Amen? No. He's looking at our book collection, honey. Absolutely. You shouldn't have had them to begin with. Amen? Amen. What a shame to have to try and convince the church or any Christian who knows the Lord Amen. that those things are not of God and Amen. are not acceptable. Amen. Hallelujah. In America, it is not only accepted, but it's looked at as fun yeah. and even silly right. by a lot of people. True. That is what is said of Halloween, that it's just fun. Amen. Yeah. And the foolish church follows right along with the path that the world trods. True. Amen. But I ask you this morning, I, I challenge you this morning to get you a Bible. And if you don't have one, I'll give you one after church. You may have to have a magnifying glass to see it because the print's real small. All right. But I want you to search from Genesis to Revelation. Come on. And show me where it's okay. Right. Show me. Show me one scripture, Brother Sleece, where it even leaves a doubt. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where it even leaves any kind of movement at all for our opinion on the witchcraft and the Bring occult. It Amen. Find me one scripture that leaves some kind of doubt on how God feels about witchcraft Come and on. the occult. Amen? Come on. You won't find it from Genesis to Revelation. 
Old Testament, New Testament. Law, grace. Witchcraft and the occult is condemned by God and All called right. an abomination. Amen. And listen to me. It will only bring hurt to your soul, to your All mind, right. to your spirit, to your family, to your home. Yes. There is no life to be found in it, only death. All right. There is no peace to be found in it, only torment. True. Amen. The devil can offer you no peace. Exactly. And that's what witchcraft and the occult, they're not from God. Come on. They're from the devil. Amen. Absolutely. Hollywood is portrayed it as such that it has been dumbed down so to the point to where they believe that they're, they're, they've got people to believe that there are some good witches. All right. Amen. True. That the devil is a cartoon character. Come on. That there's such thing as white magic. All right. No, it's all black. It's all an abomination. It's all wrong. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. God has never changed His mind. Amen. On witchcraft and the occult. I'm going to give you some scriptures this morning to prove this. And like I said, we could spend this Sunday and yeah. next Sunday and maybe a month worth of Sundays yeah. talking about the history of the celebration of Halloween. We could talk about the the testimonies of witches that have came out of the occult and Wicca. Amen. And they'll tell you that it's detrimental to your spirit, that it's right. wrong. But we don't have to look at those things. We can look at the Word of God. Come on. Ephesians 5 and 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22, Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That Scripture alone, all appearance of evil, Right. Anything that appears to be evil, God's Word commands us to abstain from or Amen. to withdraw from, not to have anything to do with it. Amen? Right. Witchcraft and the occult have become so acceptable to the world and to the church that when anyone dares preach on this, you get made fun of. Yes. Amen. But yes. that's what the devil wants. Amen. He wants you to believe it's okay. Right. He wants you to believe that it's just fun. Come on. Amen. Amen. You know how many people have gotten messed up with Ouija boards just because they believed it was just a game right. and it was just for fun? About. No, it's not. If you got one, take it and burn it. Amen? Yes. If you have books like Harry Potter, movies like Harry Potter, yeah. movies like Friday the 13th, movies like Halloween, I know I'm behind the times because I don't watch none of that stuff and I don't know what's out there now. Yeah. But any of them that go along with that, get rid of them. Amen. I've had people, now this is the truth, I've had people over the years tell me, I need somebody to come pray over my house. Right. It just feels like there's spirits or something in there. Uh -huh. And then you go in and you see they're on the shelf by their TV, the right. videotapes that they have. Right. And you think, my goodness, no wonder. Uh -huh. No my, my, no wonder that, that you feel spirits in your house. Amen. Amen. The movies that you watch, you can't watch that stuff without it doing something to your spirit. True. You can't feed upon that stuff without it doing... Just, just today, the same way as you can't read God's Word without it benefiting you. Amen. You can't feast upon the things of the devil without it being a detriment to your spirit and your soul. Amen. Right. It'll have the exact opposite effect. You know how when you can go to God's Word and you can get peace? Yes. And you can get comfort? Amen. When you go in the other direction, when you feast on the other things, the things of the world, the things of the devil, it gives you exact opposite of what you get from God's Word. Amen. Amen. Right. So we see here that he says to abstain from all appearance of evil. And surely, yeah. surely I could get you not to argue with me that the things that you see today, this month, as closer we get to the celebration of Halloween, yeah. the, 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 the costumes that you see in the stores, the decorations that you see, surely you can... See that that is the appearance of evil. Come on. Amen. Tell it. That is the appearance of evil. And he Absolutely. said to abstain from it. Amen. All appearance of evil. Right. And the church is no better off than the world. All right. As I've browsed and, and to look and see what the festivities would be of churches in our throughout the land right. this month for this celebration, that they feel as if they have to have an alternative or Amen. they feel they have to use it to win souls, they'll have things like Hell Night. You're right. Amen. True. There are churches that are taking Michael Jackson's thriller right. and using that and changing it and trying to make it a Christian themed thing to save souls. Right. With the with the cast members dressed up like zombies and the cast members dressed up like you know, well I guess 
Zombies are the walking dead. Dressed up like witches in the occult, the devil, whatever the case may be. Trying to use the things of the world to win the world. Right. Trying to use the things of darkness to win people to the light. Amen? All right. Impossible. Because God has condemned all that. I want you to show me here. Show me here where in the Word of God it says it's okay to dress up like the devil in order to try and win the world. It's okay to dress up like a zombie in order to try to win. It's okay to dress up like a witch as long as you're doing it to try and win the world. You won't find it. Amen. I told you I'm sending out a challenge this morning to everyone out there that listens on radio, to everyone out there that watches this video, to everyone out there on Facebook and YouTube and any place else that gets posted. I challenge you Come to on. find me one scripture Amen. in this Bible. Right. That says it's okay Come on. to mess with the occult and witchcraft. Right. That shows it, that leaves you thinking any other thing than that God has condemned it. Amen. The strong language He uses Come on, preach. is enough to let us know that God condemns the abomination of witchcraft and Absolutely. the occult. Amen. But I ask you today, how much spiritual discernment does it take to know that having a zombie walk is wrong? Come on. How much spiritual discernment today does it take to know that having a, ha a haunted house is wrong? Right. That witches are wrong. That witchcraft is wrong. That celebrating death and evil is wrong. Come on, preach. Or using these things in some way to try to get people to church is wrong. Amen? All right. Listen to this. Isaiah 5 and 20. You might want to write these down. I hope it won't keep you very long. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good Amen. and good evil. Exactly. That put darkness for light yeah. and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Right. You cannot use darkness to dispel darkness. Amen. Amen. True. You cannot use evil to defeat evil. Come on. Amen? Come on, bring it out. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 20th verse. But I say that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. All right. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Right. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Amen. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the tables of devils. Amen. And I ask you again today, and I'm mostly preaching this to the church because the world doesn't know any better. Right. Amen. True. The church should know better. Yes. Sir. Amen. The church should know better. I shouldn't have to stand before the church world today. Any preacher shouldn't, have, not just me, but any preacher should not have to stand before the church world and try to convince them that Satan is evil. Oh. That witchcraft is evil. Right. That the occult is evil. Exactly. That shouldn't have to be something that has to be preached to the church. To the world, yeah, because the world don't know. Amen. Apparently the church don't know either. Right. Amen. Really? Apparently the church don't know either. Right. And some of that, all of that's not the church people's fault. A lot of that falls on the shoulders of the preachers that stand behind the pulpits that never mention it. Absolutely. That never take a stand against it. Amen. That never preach against it and partake in it. Amen. Not far up the road. I don't know if they're doing it this year or not, but one of the churches that used Michael Jackson's thriller mess to try and win people to the Lord. The pastor preaches from a coffin dressed up like a vampire or something. How pitiful. Amen. How pitifully ignorant is the church that she's came to the place where she tries to win the world by dressing up like the devil? Amen. It, 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 it confuses me yeah. because I don't understand it. Right. When you read the Word of God, it leaves no wiggle room at all when it comes Come to the occult and witchcraft. Come on, bring it out. Leviticus 20 and 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them. Listen to what he says. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. I'm trying to tell you today that every time that God deals with the subject of the occult or witchcraft or witches or, or wizards right. or fortune tellers or any of that, he uses such strong language that he is warning you to stay away from it. Amen. Amen. Right. It's an abomination in the eyes of God.
Absolutely. Shouldn't have to tell you that. If you got video games that's got them in it, you should have enough sense of your own to get rid of them. I mean, if you've got movies that's got them in it, you should have enough sense of your own to get rid of them. But God has to point these things out. Really? Underline them. Put them in capital letters in order to get the church to see what is right there before you. Amen. I'm trying to get along here. I don't want to keep you too long this morning. Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, 9 through 12. Listen to what he says. When thou art come into the land of the, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. Listen to what he says. There shall not be a found, a found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are just doing them in fun and it's all right. That ain't what it says. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before Amen. thee. Now what do you list here? Divination? Observer of times, enchanter, a witch, a charmer, a consulter with familiar spirits, a wizard, a necromancer. And he said all of these things are an abomination in the sight of God. Amen. The word divination there means to use something to discern the future. Right. Such as a fortune teller. Fortunes, a Ouija board, tarot cards, crystal balls. Even things that we Kentuckians can relate to as wives' tales. All right. Dropped a dish rag. Mm -hmm. a tramp's coming. <laughs> My nose is itching. Company must be coming, I guess. I don't know. Picture fell off the wall. Death coming. Amen. Birds in the house. There's a death coming. Yeah. All of it witchcraft. Mm. All of it superstition. A black cat crossed the road. Witchcraft. Walking under a ladder gives me bad luck. Witchcraft. Friday the 13th, bad luck day. Witchcraft. Every bit of it. Witchcraft. All right. We're used to it here in Kentucky because we were raised listening to it. Amen. And more than likely, you know, Granny didn't know right. that it was wrong. True. We know it's wrong by the Word of God. Amen. Because he says that divination is an abomination in the sight of God. And that is using anything to tell the future. Right. Amen. True. Whether it be, you know, the Celts and the Druids who were Halloween originated from, they would look into the flames of the fire and they would try to tell the future that way. Right. They would I think they would they would peel an apple and throw the throw the peeling in the fire and if there whatever face that made, that was who you was going to marry. How would you like that? <laughs> Honey, I love you so much. You reminded me of a burnt apple peel I saw in the fire one night. Amen. But divination Trying to tell the future with things other... We already know who knows the future. Amen? Amen? And whether a black cat crossed your road or whether you walk under a ladder or you broke a mirror, that has nothing to do with your future. Amen? God owns the future. Amen. Hallelujah. And He owns you. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, preach it. So all these things, an abomination. Rabbit's foot. Right. My lucky coin. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I wouldn't even carry somebody gave me a little thing one time they said here carry this and it was a preacher uh -huh. said carry this and you billfold it'll bring you financial blessings I thought good grief in the morning hmm. ain't no different than carrying a rabbit's foot oh, amen right. sure. Leroy's holy water that he sells on television ain't no better than a rabbit's foot amen the prayer shower, the prayer cloth that Slick Willie pass, tries to press onto you from television saying if you'll buy it then you'll get financial blessings. No better than a rabbit's foot. Amen. Oh, All of it's witchcraft and we see these things in the church today. Right. Prayer shawls, if you wear them because you believe they make you more holy or bring you closer to God, Brother Dave, that's witchcraft. Amen. There's only one way to get close to God, and that's through the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's only one way to get your prayers answered, and that's to go through Jesus Christ in His name Amen. before the throne to the Father. Amen? Amen. I'm fixing close. No other way. 
What a shame to have to tell the church these things. Amen. And how it must grieve the Holy Spirit to try and convince Christians Absolutely. what is so clearly laid out in the Word of God. Come on. Amen. Amen. But witchcraft is a mistress. It seduces. It gets you to believe that it's okay or that it's fun or that there's nothing wrong with it. Amen. All right. Amen. True. Whenever the Bible speaks of King Manasseh in 2 Chronicles 33 and 6, it says this of him. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He observed times and he used enchantments and witchcraft. And he dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. And he wrought much evil in the sight of God to provoke him to anger. There's another scripture where the Lord deals with witchcraft, not in a, not in a good light. 2 Kings 9 and 22. Jehu has this to say about Jezebel. Whenever Joram asked him, is there peace? Jehu answered said, what peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. Amen. God never looks at witchcraft in the occult in a positive light. Right. Amen. Listen to what he says in Micah 3 and 7. Then shall the seers be ashamed and the diviners be confounded. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. You will find no answer from God. Saul found this out. King Saul found this out. True. You will not find an answer from God going to a witch to find your answer. True. Or calling a 900 psychic number to find your answer. Saul, King Saul there couldn't hear from God, so he thought, well, I'll go to a witch and see if she can help me. By the time he was through, he's wishing he hadn't never dealt with the witch. Amen? True. Listen to what he says in Micah 5 and 12. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. 1 Samuel 15 and 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Amen. 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 Revelation 18 and 23, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. For the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Right. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. All right. By their sorceries were all nations deceived. Amen. Scripture after Scripture showing us God's attitude and opinion on the occult Amen. and witchcraft. That's right. Amen. True. There's no room there for debate. Amen. Brother Sleece, there's no Scripture to be found Amen. as long as I do it in fun. It's okay. Right. No. You can't do it in fun. Right. You might think you are, no. but you're not. Amen. Amen. The mistress of witchcrafts not only have seduced the world to take part in the right. things of darkness, but darkness, but they've seduced the church as well. Amen. We've tried just giving some literature, some material to church people, and they say, no, no, I don't want to read it. Mm. Well, no, I wouldn't either. Now, if I had my house all duded up with witches and vampires, mm. I wouldn't want to read it either. Mm. If I was going to my Halloween party dressed like a witch, I wouldn't want to read it either. Because the Holy Ghost might convict you and prick you. Amen. And you might have to be a separate people, saith God. Right. You might actually have to take a stand for something and not go along with the flow. Amen. You might actually have to have to set your children down and explain to them that some things are wrong right. to participate in. Amen? On, Some things are dangerous and detrimental to your spirit. Exactly. And this is one of them. Amen. Amen. True. I'm closing with Isaiah the 47th chapter. Isaiah 47. I'm going to read four verses there. Isaiah 47 and 12. Listen to what he says. This is another indictment against sorcery against witchcraft listen to what he tells the people stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth if so be that thou shalt be able to profit if so be thou mayest prevail now listen thou art wearied in multitude of thy counsels let now thy astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee in other words you've turned from me to these other things see if you can find salvation there come on. because Israel 
They were a lot like us, or we were a lot, we're, or we're a lot like Israel. Amen. They strayed from the path of God when things were going good, but when things went bad, yeah. they went running back to God. Oh, Lord God, Jehovah, save us, deliver us. Amen. Amen. Here God's saying, go to your soothsayers that you consulted when you wasn't termed, when you wasn't following me. Yeah. See if they can give you an answer. Go to your sorcerers and see if they can give you an answer. How would it be today if God told His people, turn to the things of the world and see if they can give you an answer? That you follow them more than you follow me anyway. On, turn to the things of darkness and see if you can find an answer there. You follow those things more than you follow me anyway. On, if you think those things are fun, follow after those. See where they get you. Amen? All right. Listen to what He says. Verse 14, Behold, they shall be a stubble, the fire shall burn them. Right. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. Amen. There shall not be a coal to warm, nor fire to sit before right. it. Last verse, Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter, and none shall save thee. Amen. He's telling us there's no salvation to be found in those things. Right. He's telling us today that there's no good to be found in those things. Amen. He's telling us today that there is no wisdom, Brother Dave, to be found in those things. Amen. He's telling us today that there is no profit to be found in those things. Exactly. Amen? Because all of it glorifies the kingdom of darkness. Right. And has been rejected of God. Come on. You couldn't pay me enough money to go into a church where the pastor, the deacons, and the choir members dress up like devils in order to get people in to come to the altar. Amen. It gives me the creeps thinking about it, let alone what I go in there and sit down through and, and be through all that mess. But the church up the road sold tickets till they were sold out. People leaving there saying, oh, that wasn't that powerful? No, it wasn't powerful. Well, it might have been powered by the devil. Amen. It wasn't Holy Spirit powered. Amen. True. It's sad. It's a shame. Amen. To have to tell God's people that these things are wrong. Exactly. To have to tell pastors who are so ignorant right. that they allow these things into their churches. Well, maybe we can fill our church. Yeah, but you can fill a building doing a lot of things that ain't of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. Preach the Word. Amen. Tell them about Jesus. Right. You can't use the things of the devil, amen, to win people from the devil. Right. Jesus told them one time, He said, Beelzebub can't cast out Beelzebub. Amen. The devil can't cast out the devil. True. You can't use the devil to save people. Right. Only Jesus Christ and yeah. Him crucified can save man. people. Amen. And from Genesis to Revelation, there's no doubting what God's attitude amen. is toward the occult and witchcraft. Amen. Should be our attitude today yes, toward the occult and witchcraft. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something before we go.